So, okay, so um, before my talk, I want to first thank the committee to give me this opportunity for the talk. And I want to say sorry that I cannot be here to meet you guys face to face. So I'm Chui Fan Kong from uh, TD Lee Institute and the Shanghai Jiao Tong University. So I'm going to talk about this um, talk. Uh, so it's about uh, improving CP measurement with neon decayed rust. And uh, uh, this work is finished uh, with uh, in collaboration with my advisor, uh, Xiao Fengge and the postdoc, uh, Pedro Pasquini. So, so I want to first briefly discuss about the neutral oscillation. Uh, so this part has already um, been covered by pro, uh, Professor uh, Barry, uh, Barry Boeing's lecture, and I think you all have already known that. So the uh, neutral oscillation, we can divide it into three parts, the neutral production here, and the neutral propagation, and also the neutral detection. So we know that the neutral oscillation is the first evidence for neutral beyond the standard model, and it can give it can uh, tells us that uh, the neutral are um, uh, massive new particles, and it uh, uh, it has both uh, flavor at the state and the neutral mass at the state, and uh, they are correlated with the PMS matrix here. So. Currently, the neutral oscillation, the measurement of new, uh, currently the neutral oscillation can be described by in total six parameters. So, which, uh, which includes three mixing angles, two squared mass differences, and one direct CP phase. So, uh, in the past 20 years, we have um, the, uh, there are many uh, neutral experiments can measure such uh, oscillation parameters. And we can see. Um, uh, we, we are now in, in entering the preci high precision level, and uh, but uh, unfortunately, the the final one, the direct CP phase, the current uh, uncertainty is quite large. So it's not, uh, um, it's uh, we 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 still have a long way to uh, to precise measure uh, precisely measure the direct CP phase. So to see the CP phase in the neutral oscillation, we can we can just uh, do a very simple calculation. So this is the uh, neutral oscillation probability, and this is uh, uh, for the anti-neutral mode. We can just uh, replace the alpha with the muon neutral and the beta with the uh, electron neutral. We can do the simple calculation, and we can get this, this uh, relation. So this is uh, uh, oscillation probability for the muon flavor uh, oscillating into um, electron flavor uh, and. And the left one is uh, anti for the anti neutron mode, and the right one is for the neutron mode. So the difference is uh, proportional to the CP phase. So we can we can think that we can use these uh, oscillation channels to to uh, to constrain such direct CP phase, uh, such direct CP phase. So actually, this is uh, how the experimental uh, experiments do uh, uh, in, uh, in real. So we need to accelerate initial experiments to, to detect such direct CP phase. So currently, there are two um, running uh, experiments. One is called T2K in Japan. The other one is called NOVA in, uh, in US. So we can see the upper. So from the right panel, uh, from the right part, we can see um, the current status of the best fit results are intention for these two experiments. We can see the uh, black, uh, this black, um, black squared point, and this black, uh, the, the cross, uh, the cross is uh, intention with each other. So uh, we we need the next generation experiments to precisely measure the direct speed phase in the future. So here we, we um, in our work we discuss uh, the next generation uh, generation experiment uh, called Dune experiment. This is uh, located in US, and uh, we can see for this experiment the neutrino source has a very large. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the neutrino flat uh, the neutrino has a large uh, energy and uh, the um, neutrino beam is very wide for the uh, for the uh, for neutrino beam. So the high neutral energy means the matter effect uh, actually cannot be ignored because uh, the matter effect is just uh, proportional to the neutral energy during the propagation. So the neutral, uh, the matter effect arises from the neutral interacting with the uh, uh, electrons during the propagation. So it can interact uh, with the electron via um, W and Z both on exchange during the propagation. And we cannot ignore such effects. So 
actually, uh, this met effect can change, uh, can modify the oxygen probability uh, if we introduce such uh, par uh, a parameter. So a parameter here is just a, to uh, a parameter representing the uh, metric factor size. We can see the size is proportional to the neutral energy and also is proportional to the uh, number density of the electron inside our Earth. So we can, so for for this metric uh, for this metric density, we can extract from several uh, Earth models like a PREM Earth model, and we can get the uh, information for this uh, density. And uh, actually, the uh, metric effect cannot be ignored, and it can also affect the CP uh, the CP measurement. We can see the right plot here. I show two different uh, cases. One is without metal effect. This is uh, shown in this uh, red contour, and another one is with the metal effect and shown in the blue contour. And this is uh, oscillation probability values. So we can see if we, uh, so we, we can see that the metal effect can have a very similar behavior as the different CP values for the uh, uh, in the oscillation probability level. So we can conclude that that uh, metal effect can fix the CP and uh, contaminate, uh, contaminate the CP measurement in the real uh, neutrino experiment. So we want to uh, we want to improve the um, CP measurement. So we 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 need an, uh, so we propose that we maybe we can use a low energy neutrino beam from muon decay rest to get rid of the metal effect contamination. So we can uh, use the proton heating. Uh, target to pro produce pions and then pions decay into muons and muon finally decay into muon anti neutrinos. This this decay channel can finally give us the spectrum like uh, like the figure shows. So we want to you to use uh, um, the uh, the muon anti neutrinos to uh, to to serve as an uh, oscillation channel and we can. Uh, we expect we can uh, we can read some, we can get some CP uh, information from the uh, from this uh, low energy neutrino channel. This is our proposal here. So to detect such low energy neutrinos, we we um, so from so you know doing experiment is just a liquid argon um, time um, time projection chambers and uh, uh, the uh, in the cross section between the uh, anti uh, the electron anti neutrino and the argon is quite small compared with the uh, inverse beta decay. So this is uh, the event rate can be very low at doing uh, five decayers. But uh, for, fortunately, there is another experimental proposal called SEA. So SEA wants to use a, a water based liquid scintillator uh, to uh, to uh, to substitute one of the doomed far detectors. So. Uh, so if we have the CI, uh, if we have the CI detector, we can uh, significantly uh, enhance the event rate. So this is uh, uh, what we want. So now we have uh, such so the measurement of neutrinos can be divided into several channels. And uh, actually, for the uh, DUM detect uh, for the DUM uh, uh, neutrino beams detected by the DUM detectors, it can uh, it has already. Uh, done by the DUM collaboration, and we need uh, these two new channels, and uh, we we have simulated these two part these two parts. So this is uh, a results from our simulation, and this uh, is uh, low energy neutrinos for the uh, at the CI detector, and we need to first uh, to to choose some um, optimal baselines for the mu CL choices. So this is. Uh, so we have um, calculated the CP and sensitivity, and we found that there are several uh, local minima uh, minima for the CP and sensitivity, and we finally choose this three baselines as the optimal cho uh, choice. And this is the event rate for the low energy uh, neutrinos they had detected at the CR detector. And also, um, so com uh, combining the low energy neutrino beams and uh, the original DUM beams, we can uh, we can finally calculate the CP sensitivity for the uh, combination. And we have compared with the original DUM experiments. Uh, it's shown uh, by the blue curves, and uh, we can see the CP sensitivity is quite large for uh, at the maximal CP values, for example, uh, around uh, uh, 90 degrees and the minus 90 degrees. But using the MUSIA um, 
proposal, we can significantly enhance the CP sensitivity as expected. So it's shown by the red and the green curves here. And we also compared with some other um, experiments, all the experimental uh, proposals, and we can see the DIUM plus MUSEA. This proposal can, um, can be um, the state-of-art uh, uh, experimental proposal for CP measurement. Yeah, so as a summary, I, I, uh, I have told you that uh, currently there is a still long way to go for measuring CP phase and the CP sensitivity can be reduced because of the, uh, the meta effect. And the way proposed using um, an additional low energy neutral beam that can be uh, used to uh, enhance the CP sensitivity significantly. So thank you for, for your attention. I thank you for your for thought. Um, I was wondering uh, if uh, the, the method that you use, uh, a lot of baseline that you use, that you're uh, the reason why you're proposing uh, a difference in the field of being the process that can reduce the mass effects is because we don't understand the mass yes. effects to predict the level of effects with a good accuracy at the end of the detector, right? Or the mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I haven't. Uh, I cannot hear you very clearly. So you say uh, what we want is to um, decrease the metal effect using the low energy neutral beam, right? Yeah, uh, I was just wondering if uh, you want to decrease the matter effects because you cannot account for it precisely enough. Uh, along yeah, with yeah, yeah. You're right. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the question. I um I don't know if I understood the experiment. You said that correctly. Can you go back to the the new slide where you showed the continuous work and uh, you see? Um. So you are talking about the nutrient source, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the nutrient source is come from uh, coming from the um. Uh, uh, so it's called muon rest. So there are three steps. Uh, three steps to create the low energy neutron beam. So first, we we need is the protons hitting the target to pro produce pions, and and actually the negative pions are captured because uh, there are many um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, the negative pions are captured by the. Uh, nuclei, uh, nuclei and uh, the positive pions can remain. And then the positive pions can decay into antimions. And then the antimions decay into muon antineutrinos. So uh, what we want is just uh, the muon antineutrinos. So the black curve here, this is uh, what we want for the neutrino beam. The source and the new source, it's only the energy, right? Oh uh, yeah, this is a new source. Yeah, you are right. Okay, one last question for you, okay? Yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to ask, can you consider also using Juno uh, as a combined analysis? Oh, um, sorry, can you repeat again? I, uh, I cannot hear you very clearly, yeah. Do you actually consider Juno as well as a Delta CP measurement? Oh, so, uh, yeah, sorry. I. I can't hear clearly, sorry. I don't know why. Maybe the distance, distance is too long be, between. Uh, uh -huh. Also uh, combining the analysis for, for Delta CP. Yeah, so, yeah, so we analyze the CP sensitivity. Yeah, so this is the uh, final purpose. Okay, but you not, not combine the results, right? Oh, uh, yeah, without combining other experiment results. So it, it's uh, for DIUM alone and uh, DIUM plus MUSEA alone. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. One more time.